Hello everyone, my name is Renita Das and I'm a partner and senior vice president with Frost & Sullivan, a global growth consulting company. I'm here today to speak about some of the important trends taking place in the clinical laboratory market in 2023 and beyond. So that's a really, really good question. Sustainability and digitization are two very, very important topics today in the laboratory market. In a very simple way, it refers to the process of how we're digitizing clinical laboratories in a, in a long lasting, green and organic way. Now, I don't know if people know, but the global pharmaceutical industry has about 55% more carbon emissions than the auto industry and we always blame the auto industry and the pharmaceutical industry also has five percent of worldwide global greenhouse gas emissions that are produced and therefore we are beginning to recognize and address this problem of non-sustainability of laboratories by implementing more sustainable practices we can use resources more efficiently and therefore it will be better outcomes for the planet and for all of us. You know, I was reading a recent, recent research statistic that showed that the average research laboratory uses three times more energy than is used in an office building. Also, labs produce an enormous amount of waste, mainly plastic waste. And a recent estimate said that a scientist working in a lab generates about one ton of plastic waste in a year. And if we actually extrapolate that to a whole department, say of around 280 scientists that are working, that is equivalent to 5.7 million plastic two liter bottles. Isn't that amazing? 5.7 million plastic two liter bottles is being generated by 280 scientists in one laboratory. So it's very, very critical for us to switch from plastic to glass as soon as possible. So some steps that labs can take, obviously, is to reduce energy con conservation, improve waste management, take better care of equipment. But the biggest change that labs need to make is optimize their process. And this could be through electronic digital systems. I think today the biggest innovation that we are all looking forward to is what we call the smart lab. At Frost & Sullivan, we recently evaluated the size of this market and we're looking at this being a $5 billion market in two years time at growing at around 18%. So what are some of the growth opportunities that are coming out of smart labs? Obviously, the biggest one is smart labs as a service. We're also looking at the use of Internet of Things that is that will standardize the workflow, things like digital twins that will improve performance. Other big opportunities, of course, is around artificial intelligence, big data and cloud. For example, for cloud, we're talking about things like cloud based laboratory information management systems, which is called LIMS and workflow management solutions, things like diagnostic decision support systems and digital workflow management. And I do believe that RFID technology, once it's integrated, will have a tremendous impact on equipment, instruments, and reagents and make them better in terms of tracking. Digital twins also that is started in the manufacturing center will slowly enter the healthcare realm and into laboratories soon, which I'm hopeful for. In my opinion, if you think about it, the mother of all myths was really the notion that in a laboratory, a laboratory that has the lowest cost per test in the market would have tremendous advantage over its other lab competitors. Thus, for many, many years, we all focused on trying to achieve the lowest cost per test. So everyone said, if my lab became the lowest cost producer, I would get the most market share. But obviously, it's not true. A good example is it in California, Unilabs, for example, they operated the lowest cost per test for a five-year period. And during this five-year period, despite them having the high cost advantage, they lost millions of dollars to some of their competitors. 
um, in the market. So I do believe that the lowest cost per test does not mean that it has the highest share and highest use. So that's a big myth in the, in the industry. I think MedLab Middle East brings to the table every year a community of scientists, researchers, marketers, and gurus from this industry and outside to focus on some of the key issues, challenges, best practices, and future of technology. And I think these discussions are so very critical. Having these open discussions in forums and in conferences, having prominent speakers talk about how to promote better learning, sharing, change management, can also carve the future of the industry. So I think this definite MedLab brings to the table an enormous amount of learning and best practice to the industry for the future. Mm -hmm.